Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle, and today we're going to look at a reel that I just got in. Actually, I got several of them in. Uh, some may, some of you may be aware that I do acquire uh, some odd jobs and uh, manufacturer clearances uh, type of uh, reels from time to time for resale. And uh, I just picked up a group that included a few Bass Pro reels in there. This one is the Bass Pro Cat uh, Max. Uh, 80, it's a, an 80 size reel, is a very large reel. It'll be appropriate for the large catfish, um, I'd say 40, 50 pound class type uh, fish. It's got a large capacity to it. It's got uh, 20, uh, 290 yards of 25 pound test, uh, which is quite uh, enough around here and on the Atlantic Sea coast. Uh, this is going to be used for uh, deep water fishing for. Um, It'll be used off the surf, but uh, in looking at the surf, it's not very. Doesn't look like much of a casting reel, but uh, certainly for drop fishing and for larger fish um, uh, that we have here on the uh, on the coast. So uh, let's take a look inside. I'll show you uh, what the reel is made of. I'll also show you the general tips and techniques about how to tune this reel up, and uh, we'll all learn a little bit in the process. So I start by taking off the gear side plate, and in order to do that, this has a through. Uh, side plate. It doesn't have the half, so we're going to have to take the rotor off in terms of, in order to remove that. So I start that process by taking off the spool. That's done by simply reversing out the drag knob up top. And then there's a series of um, washers on here. There's a little tension washer. washer. <laughs> and there's a little uh, click mechanism that goes with the uh, Underneath on the spool here, there's a little uh, wire clicker here uh, that tells you that the spool uh, drag is loose and that uh, it's spooling backwards if, you, if you're using a light drag. Uh, sometimes we'll use that on the, uh, if we've got a chunk of bait sitting out there in the ocean and we're free, kind of free spooling it or light dragging it. And then we have a little lock washer uh, that holds the nut for the, the rotor up top. And I kind of like this. Um, this setup here. This uh, has got a cap on it that doesn't allow you to over tighten. It looks that way. It doesn't allow you to over tighten the reel, which is good because I've seen a lot come into my shop that uh, do over tighten and that puts a, uh, a tension on the reel and oftentimes it'll cause it to bind. So I'm reversing that uh, nut off and then we're going to pull up the washer. And I like what I see underneath here. We have an instant anti reverse which is uh, appropriate for the newer reels. So let's go down below then. Let's take the handle off. In order to take the handle off now, we're going to remove the, the handle nut screw on the other side. Some of these have uh, through screws like this one does, where the handle pulls out. Other reels will have the ones that screw into the main gear. Um, I, there's probably advantages to both in the case of this one. Um, it's fine. Uh, I do notice that there's some dirt in here on the bearings, so we'll go ahead and clean that one up as we take this assembly off. So you can see that there's no way that this plate would have come off without removing the rotor because there's two set screws back here that uh, control that. Uh, this reel is also a high quality, higher quality reel in that it has a bump guard below. The bump guard uh, takes some of the shock if you're if you're hitting it on a pier or a, uh, a dock wall or a boat wall and uh, the, uh, the higher quality reels tend to have that. So we're going to remove that set screw and pull this plate up. You got to watch these when you're working on the, uh, the bump guards. This one has a tab that pulled out. Some have a little hook like the pen. Uh, don't break it off or the bump guard won't work properly. So that's what that's about. And you're noticing that I'm putting all the parts into trays so that uh, I have easy access to them when I come back to uh, to reassemble the reel. I know where all these little parts go. If you don't know where the parts go, it's a good time to tell you that uh, uh, a good practice is to take pictures along the way. And uh, you may be thinking, I'm not taking pictures, but I really am. I've got this video running, and if I get stuck somewhere along the way, I can just uh, go back to the video and find out where I took the piece and part from. So. Uh, I usually recommend to take these uh, pictures on a cell phone or on a digital camera or whatever you might have at your disposal, but uh, always a good way to uh, uh, keep track of what you're doing. As a last resort, and it may not apply to this one, uh, 
but as a last resort, a lot of times manufacturers will post the schematics of the reels uh, on a website. I know that uh, the uh, standard brands, uh, things like Abu and Penn and Shimano and Okuma and the like, uh, post those. Uh, so if you get stuck along the way and you forgot to take pictures, you can always go to the schematic. But I like this because it shows you the sequence that you took them out in. And uh, you may know where the part goes, but you may not know that uh, a particular screw set goes in before the others. So uh, we're almost done taking this off. I imagine we're going to see a pretty big drive in there since this is an 80 size reel. It has a 4.5 to 1 retrieve, so that's, uh, that's a good indication. And from a quality standpoint, like I said, we've got good quality here and that we have an instant anti-reverse. We have a burring sitting right here. If we wanted access to the burring, we would pull these three uh, screws out here. I'm just simply going to lubricate that later. We have a, a brass pinion gear. Uh, so that's uh, a sign of quality as well. Okay, so all we have to do is pull that out. Now we got this um, the big gear here. It's not coming out, so that tells us we have to remove the spool shaft in order to do that. And I think the only thing that's uh, needed in this is lubrication. I'm looking behind it, and the reel is fairly dry. And that's not unusual when I uh, buy uh, job lots. Uh, like this. They've probably been sitting in a warehouse. This could have been an, an end of production reel. It, there's, uh, could have been a customer return or something. Maybe the pole broke and it was you know, sold as a rod and reel combination. And um, it just gets in a warehouse for some time, sits there and the, the lubrication dries. Okay, so we just pulled this, this spool shaft off. That should enable us to, to take the main gear out now. It does. I see that the, uh, the burring came along with it. The side plate burring, that's okay, um, and this belongs on the, um, the 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 shaft nut. Okay, so we got a quality reel here. We got three burrings at least. I think there's a fourth burring. There is a fourth burring. It's under the crosswind gear, but we've got uh, two ball burrings that uh, are on the main drive, and we have a ball burring up top here, which I showed you earlier. And that's to me, that's the minimum that you need in terms of having a. Uh, uh, a high performance reel. You need one on each side of the main drive and you need one up top on the uh, on, on the pinion gear. Uh, if you see a one bearing reel, chances are that bearing is on the um, on the pinion gear. A two bearing reel usually is on the handle side of the reel like it is here. And a three bearing reel here and then the fourth bearing here happens to be under this cross wind gear which is another sign of of some high performance and uh, other other bearings after that are um, generally on the uh, the handle they're on the uh, the line feeder line spooler and uh, then they just uh, sometimes they're inside the spools and other places so what we're doing now is we're cleaning up as I'm kind of talking away here I'm making sure that the old grease is, is removed from there. I use a series of things like Q-tips and paper towels to do that cleaning. But again, this is more to find out what this reel is about, uh, as well as do some general service while I'm at it, just uh, to make sure that it's ready to go uh, when I go to resell this reel. So I'm going to take some blue grease and put that in the channel where I just removed the older grease. This is the cross wind block. This helps the spool go up and down. Uh, when the back of this drive engages with the cross wind gear that uh, that moves on the stud. The stud moves the uh, reel up, uh, up and down on the spool and you saw how we, we removed the spool out. Now what I'm doing is I'm putting the, the blue, uh, blue grease onto the uh, pinion gear and again this is a nice quality pinion gear. While I'm at it, I'm going to look for the teeth. Of course, I know this is a, a new reel, or a relatively new reel, bought in surplus. But again, I have to be careful when I when I buy these job lots, because if the customer returned it, you're never quite sure why they returned it. So it's always a good practice to make sure you check things like the teeth, to make sure that there's not one that's bent or uneven, uh, or otherwise damaged. Uh, and, and that was possibly the cause of the return of the reel. Like I said, most of the ones that I get I tend to find are because the, uh, the reel became uh, surplused when the pole broke. Okay, I've put the, the back 
bearing in. I'm going to use oil on the bearing, so I use the glue grease on the moving parts like the pinion gears and the like. And I, I use the oil on the bearing. So now we're going to reinsert that cross wind block. And we just have to line that up with the stud to make sure that it's on there. And we can go ahead and put the main gear back in. Make sure that that's properly seated. I'm going to go put the oil on the front bearing here. And then we're going to go reinstall the shaft. And that was held in by the two screws. So you just got to work a little bit on squaring it up there, but eventually, there we go. Eventually that comes true. We go back in the parts bucket and we find those two flat headed screws that belong in here. And we reinstall those. And this is a pretty common setup for almost all large spinning reels. Uh, again, you may find a bushing on the uh, side plates as opposed to a bearing. You may find one screw holding in the uh, the spool shaft versus two. You may find some have a clip. Um, but overall, they pretty much uh, are the same in nature. So if you have a larger reel that needs some service, I would encourage you just to uh, do what I'm doing here. Just be careful when you come in initially to identify the uh, reel. Make sure that if, there, if it's not a split case, by split case I mean that the case ends here, uh, that you take that rotor off. Do not try and pry anything. That is never a good idea. Uh, if it's not coming loose, it usually means that there's a hidden screw somewhere. And if you find that hidden screw, uh, usually by doing something like removing the bump guard here, or as we saw when we took this apart, there's two screws sitting up top here. So I'm going to go put those back in. And this may be a little dangerous putting all five in at once before I get them started, but. If I turn the reel a particular way, I'm going to dump all four screws, but uh, looks like I'm okay here. Some folks ask about the uh, using a mechanical screwdriver here. Uh, I generally recommend against it. I will compromise with you and say, uh, you know, if you got bad hands or you lost the strength in, in the hand or something, go ahead and do it. Uh, I don't have much of a problem taking the screws out. It's unusual that you would uh, strip a screw coming outside, uh, but you could. Uh, this is kind of like a, a graphite or a plastic case. It's not a metal case. So on the way in, these uh, mechanical screwdrivers have a lot of torque. And I would be very careful if I was using that on the way in because you could shatter the case. You can over also over tighten the case. And if you over tighten this case, then what you're going to wind up with is uh, tension on the main gears and pinion shafts and the like mechanically and uh, it's going to wind tight so that's one of the reasons why I like that uh, cap nut on top of the rotor we had talked about a little while ago during disassembly it looks like you cannot over tighten the rotor which is a nice thing okay so there were six side plate screws we just addressed those here comes the side plate cap it just slides right in a little nut on this side I'm sorry, a little screw on this side. We'll put that back in place. So this is fairly easy to work on. All I needed was a wrench and a, a screwdriver, essentially, uh, and some oil and blue grease. So I'm going to go oil up the shaft and oil up the bearing that sits on top, and we're going to replace the rotor. Do that right now. And overall, I, I like the quality of this reel. I, uh, I think it's... A nice product. I don't know what the uh, the price is. I guess I'll go look. This is also interesting. This is a, an opposite twist to the uh, the nut. It, instead of righty tighty, it's lefty loosey. And and if you work on enough reels, you'll find that's a fairly common practice. The reason for that is kind of like the way the old Chrysler uh, cars used to run on the left side. Um, the, the reel is going to spin this way. So if you've got the, the tightening, it's almost always tightening. It won't throw the nut off. 
Uh, so that's a good thing to have there. Okay, so now we're going to put that little uh, set. This one's kind of a rubbery plastic sort of a thing. They come in metal, they come in plastic. I'm going to grab this just a little bit back off because I need that set hole there. There we go. And again, another reason why I use these parts trays. It's very easy to lose small parts like this set screw here. So why take chances? Okay, so that, that's the bottom of the reel other than the handle. So let's go put that handle on. Remember this piece came out earlier that goes on the back of the handle nut. These are reversible, so if you want to crank lefty or righty, you can. Uh, seems like most people crank with their left hand, so we're going to put this in on the left side. But uh, if you have a, uh, a want, need, or desire to crank with your right, uh, then go right ahead and switch them around. It, uh, it works either way. All right, we put that tension screw in. We're going to go back now and put in the three pieces that belong on the top for the hold the spool. Goes in. This is that little click noise that it will make when uh, when your drag is backing off. And this is the little tension washer that holds that, uh, that piece in place. And before I put this spool back on, I'm going to go in and look at the drags. Now, this has got a lot of lubrication on it. It's a new reel, so we shouldn't see any need to go ahead and uh, replace the drags, but we're just going to show you what there's in there. And again, I'm kind of looking at it like, okay, what what is this reel made of? And the drags are a part of it. So there's a tension clip that sits inside of a groove. We'll take that out and then we'll remove the drag layers. And these are oiled felt washers. So that's one of the, uh, the drag uh, types that are out there. These are fully lubed. Uh, there's nothing we need to do there. Felt are very flexible washers. Uh, sometimes they don't hold up to the rigors of uh, of the fishing. You, know, you need to know what you're doing out there. Uh, oil's dry. Uh, bigger fish could tear these up if you put a lot of stress on them. Uh, so you, there's uh, a lot of times in the marketplace there is uh, alternatives out there like Carbonex drags and the like. And if you find yourself in a situation where uh, the, the drags are just getting worn through or torn, uh, I should make those conversions over. But this is not unusual. A, uh, the Pen Fierce, for example, uses the, uh, the felt drags. So uh, it's, not a, uh, it's not a cheap alternative, if you will. Some people try to figure out, you know, okay, where are they saving the money? Uh, it's not in that. Uh, it's, it's just a particular preference. Uh, for some manufacturers want to use some models that have that. So for example, the Pen Fierce uses the uh, um, We're just lining this up here as we're trying to talk. The Pen Fierce uses felt. The uh, Pen Battle uses the Carbonex. And uh, that's the next step up there. But uh, that's how that works. Okay, so we're just going to work our way through here. And then we just button it up and we're done. So put that drag knob on. We learned a lot. This is a high quality reel as a store brand. It's a nice product. If you fish heavy fish in the 20 pound class plus, uh, it's got a lot of line capacity. It's a smooth reel. It's got uh, the bearings where they need to be. It's got a nice washer set. And uh, I'm not sure what the pricing is on this reel, but uh, I'm going to find out. But it's a nice reel from uh, available at Bass Pro Shops. So uh, I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you did, please like it. Uh, if you'd like to see more, please subscribe to my channel. And uh, as I get different reels in, I take these apart, uh, either to repair them or to find out what they're made of. In this case, we just wanted to find out what they were made of. But I thank you for watching. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle.